so uh, to make sure everybody understands what you're talking about, mm -hmm. what do you mean by syndication? What's that look mm -hmm. like and what's the benefits of it? Yeah. So in the true SEC definition, and I am paraphrasing, anytime you bring two or more people together into a, a project, and, and in this instance, a real estate investment, where one person is, is active, doing all the heavy lifting, doing all the work, and the other person is bringing money and they're passive. They don't have a hand in making decisions or you know, doing any of the, the project management in a project. Then, then you've created a security and then is governed by the Securities and Exchange Commission. And so they state that you have to file that and you have to register uh, with a defending on the fund or the entity that you set up that has to be registered. So for us, um, that, that is a true definition. So for us, um, there's one person, as I just mentioned, me, that I am the promoter. I am the active person on the investment, whereas I bring in then a lot of private equity, a lot of limited partners that come into the project they don't lend a hand. They're not involved in the decision-making process. What they're lending is money into the project. They're investing into the project uh, with me. And so their role and responsibility is, is to wire the funds to close the project. And my responsibility is to do everything else, report back to them the progress, show the projections and how we are um, exceeding, hopefully meeting, or if we are underperforming on our projections and then send out uh, K-1s at the end of the year because they do become owners of this entity and they get to participate in the upside as well as um, in the depreciation as well. So that, um, and I guess a limited sense without getting too far in the weeds, Jay, is um, is a, the definition of a syndication and how we go about approaching the market. Yeah. So, you mm. know, in the world of single family houses, uh, mm -hmm. there's multiple exit strategies or there's multiple strategies of what someone's going to do with that property after they invest mm -hmm. in it. You know, mm -hmm. you can, you can buy a single family house. You can fix it up. You can flip it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can wholesale houses and, you know, wholesale houses out to other real estate investors. You can buy houses and you can fix them up and you can hold them, you know, for the long mm -hmm. term. So, Compare self-storage to what I just did with single family houses. Um, are there all these different strategies as to how you can go about the self-storage business? And second part of that question is, if there are different strategies, how do you decide which one you're going to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say property is property, you know, in a general sense, and you can do all of the above. You know, we buy them and wholesale them or sometimes at wholesale without us ever taking ownership or taking deed to the property. Uh, you can buy them, you can fix them up, turn around and, and flip them. You can buy them and, and turn them around partially and then sell them off and call it a flip or non. You sell it to the next person down the road that's going to take it the rest of the way. Um, the way that we do it is um, typically we're a longer term hold, um, three to five years. That gives us time to, in an existing facility, really turn it around, raise rates, make the improvements, and um, reduce the expenses as much as possible to maximize the net operating income and then sell it for maximum dollar. Our conversions and development, you know, those projects take roughly four to five years to either buy a building, say a vacant grocery store, and convert it to self-storage and then start from ground zero and uh, lease it up to 80, 85% occupancy and, and bring in our limited partners and allow them to have a, a payday and an exit that is uh, comparable to if they were to invest in uh, any other type of uh, entity or a business uh, over that time and, and really focusing on the internal rate of return. And the same goes for development. So in terms of an exit strategy, it's a little more difficult uh, in, in the way that we head into those larger projects with our, our partners and that we can't do a 1031 unless everybody decides to go along with us into the next project, which obviously they're not going to. So at that point, um, we will sell and that we will take our profits off the table and then we will move into the next uh, project. For our limited partners, for the most part, they are investing through a retirement vehicle, like a self-directed IRA or a solo or real estate 401k. So they don't really have those tax consequences at, at, at the exit. Uh, we also are looking at in terms of an exit strategy, and I guess to back up a step, you know, Jay, I, I think you and, and hopefully everybody on this call recognizes that you, you should always look at the exit strategy or determine what your exit strategy is before you get into a project. It's not a good plan to just uh, say, well, there's a good deal. I'm just going to buy it and figure it out later. Um, you can find yourself maybe a do not, you know, a, a don't want or later on down the road, or you sit back and take a look at your empire and you realize what a mess. I can't even manage this because I never paid any attention to what I was doing. So every time we hit into a project, you know, we identify 
if it's a good deal, are we going to keep it? You know, if we're going to flip this thing in a year, then we've got some, you know, capital short term capital gains taxes. That's a consideration. If we own it um, solely, then we can do a 1031 into something else. And do we want to do that three years from now? Um, and I'm saying at any point in time, do we want to do that two or three years from now? Where what are the interest rates going to be and what are cap rates going to be? And how do we expect the market and the economy? What's it going to look like? So we're, we're always looking six months, a year down the road, five years down the road and anticipating what's going on with the market, meaning interest rates and our capitalization rates, which is how we value these facilities. And then overall, does this really fit in our business plan? Um, I, I suffer like everybody from shiny objectitis and um, I want to buy them all. You know, if somebody else buys a self storage facility or develop this one, and I'm going down the road, I'm just like, that should have been mine. I, I should have <laughs> built that. I should have bought that. And um, it's a it's a real struggle. But if we get into that, you know, we can paint ourselves into a corner if we get into that situation where we just, you know, every once in a while we have to say no. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.